Hey, hey, hey. Of course, I'm not quite ready, but I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, tonight, we're talking about 2022 marketing trends. I always get confused where I am on the camera. 2022 marketing trends. Hey, hey, hey. I left my phone. Let's see. Huh? No, I didn't. Um, so I'm Andrea White. I am CEO of Elite Business Coaching. Tonight, we're going to talk about do this or do that. I don't know. You want to make decisions based on what's best for your business, your budget, and your customers, and your brand. Uh, and so that is what I always like to recommend to my clients. We talk about best strategies, you know, best practices, and then we make decisions based on, um, you know, what is best for their business their budget and their customers and their brand. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get right down to it um, because we have a few um, to go through and I don't want to go too long uh, this evening. I always like to check out on my phone because it's different a, ver a lot of times uh, on the computer than it is on the phone and so if you are here say hello let me know you're here um, there we go hey Gabrielle how are you I miss you I miss you I hope you and the young man are doing well and that y'all had a good birthday dinner um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in um, and so I'm going to share some recommendations um, specifically around marketing for you to think about for 2022. And as always, you know, what you want to do is A, you want to listen, think, and most important, you want to make a decision and take action. Make a decision and take action. Um, yes, Gabrielle, all you have to do is let me know when you want to chat and we will get you all figured out, okay? Um, and so let's talk about um, just the basics first. Um, and so this is where I have found and just watching and then also working with my clients, one of the things that is, you know, really not happening you know, in the way, in the in in how often it should be happening is connecting and linking your sales and marketing, and it sounds like a no brainer, um, but uh, very often, you know, we think about the two as very separate and very different. And um, what's important is to think about, you know. Um, Perhaps whatever your monthly goal, or whatever your weekly goal is, you know, what do you want to promote? What do you want to sell? What do you want to get off the shelf? What service do you want to get up and out into the world? That is what your sales goal and sales focus is all about. And then you want to link that to a particular marketing strategy. And so you want to think about that in terms of, you know, do you want to promote, you know, that particular item, product, or service, or plural products and services? Do you want to promote, market, um, have offers, discounts, no offers, no discounts, sale, etc.? You know, how do you want to market that particular thing or things for that particular week or for the particular month? Um, very often we'll have, you know, products and services um, and then wonder why people aren't buying. It's because we have not marketed them probably. Um, and if we have marketed them, we probably haven't marketed them enough. And so you definitely want to make sure that your sales and your marketing are connected. And so, you know, if you have a sales goal for the month, then you want to map out how you're going to meet that sales goal week by week by week through your marketing. That could be posts, stories, collaborations, partnerships. It could be paid advertising, etc. Your email list, etc. 
Um, and so you want to make sure that whatever it is you're focusing on from a sales standpoint, um, whatever it is that's going to help you to get to your sales goal, that you're matching that up with um, frequent and strategic marketing strategies. Okay, so marketing and sales go hand in hand. They need each other to be successful. Um, okay, so align sales and marketing is number one. Um, number two is having a strategy um, for your cold, warm, and hot audiences. I've talked about this a little bit last year, um, but even more so uh, this year, you'll see a lot of information going around about customer journeys. And so this means that we need to speak to people based on where they are and getting to know us. We need to speak to them a little bit differently. Um, it is not in our best interest to kind of have the same kind of broad message or the same kinds of offers for everyone that's in our um, audience. And so if someone doesn't really know you very well, they don't know about your business very well, um, how you market to them, how you talk to them, what you offer to them is going to be very different from a person that knows you a little bit better, Maybe they've already bought from you one other time. Maybe they've been watching you for a while. They see your ads maybe regularly or they see your content um, on a regular basis. Those are called warm people. You are going to talk to them a little bit differently and you're also going to make offers and tell them about your products and services a little bit differently as well. And then for those people that have been customers, they've spent money with you before, those are your hot audiences, and you definitely, you know, want to talk to them in a different way. You definitely want to make sure that you're, um, you know, making offers, letting them know about your products and services on a regular basis. These people are probably on your email list because they've purchased from you before. So they should have, you know, made a purchase and then been immediately added to your email list or your text messaging list. That's like your VIP tribe, those people that have purchased from you before. Um, and so you want to make sure that maybe you have, you know, discounts or VIP coupons or VIP days just for those people that have purchased from you before. Now, people can come into your email list um, as a cold person um, because, you know, they opt in to a freebie or um, an opt-in or lead magnet. Um, so you can have cold people and you can have hot people on your email list, but you need to tag them differently in your um, customer relationship management software so that when you are making VIP offers, VIP discounts, you can just send that email to people that have purchased from you before. Then you can also make maybe one-time discounts, a little special um, offer or maybe a free offer, a BOGO or buy one, get one to those people that have opted into your email list. They're new to you. They don't know a whole lot about you. So you want them, you want to incentivize them to go from cold to hot, really. So you want to think about things that you can email them or send them through by text message to um, get them to go from cold to warm to hot. And so you want to think about on a monthly or with really a weekly basis, depending upon how you think about planning your week, on a weekly basis, you want to think, um, what do I want to focus on in sales for this week? How do I want to market where, uh, how do I want to market my sales goal this week? And then the third, the third part of that is how do I want to market that to my cold audience, my warm audience, and my hot audience. Um, and so you definitely want to think about your marketing in terms of cold, warm, and hot, or customer journey is what you'll see a lot um, uh, talk uh, about. Number three. Video, 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 video. Um, I mean, anything you read about marketing strategies, 
making, you know, having some success um, this year, especially in business. It's all around video. Um, Gabrielle, if you have questions, you can drop those in the comments. If anybody catches the replay, you can give me a hashtag replay and give me your questions in the comments or you're welcome to send me a DM with your questions. I always answer those um, back. It's not a bot. It's me that actually answers when you send me a direct message. Um, and so um, you have to think about video. Uh, and so... You can choose not to do it, but you're probably losing out a little bit. And again, if you're new to video, if video makes you a little bit nervous, um, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be live. It doesn't have to be live like I am right now. You could record a video and upload the link. Now, on Facebook, you do want to not upload a YouTube link, preferably, um, because Facebook wants people to stay on Facebook. Facebook doesn't want people on Facebook to click away and go over to YouTube. And so um, if your video link pulls people off of the Facebook platform, pulls people off of the Instagram platform, and sends them over to YouTube, it is not likely, it is not likely that it will get shown, but it's, it won't get shown to a whole lot of people. So Gabrielle asks, can you post a pre-recorded video? You absolutely can. And so I'm on a Mac right now, or if you record a video on your phone and you save it, it's going to be saved as an MP4. And so you can um, load that video directly from your phone onto Facebook, onto or you know onto Instagram. You can load it really onto YouTube as well. Um, what you want to avoid to do if you're going to put something on Facebook or if you're going to put something on Instagram, you want to avoid loading that video into YouTube and then copying that link from YouTube and pasting that into Facebook and Instagram. So I hope that um, answers your question, Gabrielle. Um, so ideally on Facebook, what you're uploading is an MP4 um, format. Um, or on Instagram, you're uploading an MP4 directly into Instagram. Um, and so if you have a Mac like I do, you can record you know, directly, you know, if you have a desktop, you should, you know, webcam and things like that, you should be able to record a video directly, save it on your device, and then just upload it. Now, if you are um, growing a YouTube channel, then, of course, you upload that MP4 um, into YouTube, and you make that video um, either public or or unlisted, depending upon the audience that you want to see that video. Um, and so the videos don't have to be very long, um, Gabrielle, fortunately. You have to remember that our attention spans are really, really short. Uh, and so even going live um, is considered like long form video. Um, if you, you know, like I tend to go, you know, 15, 20, you know, sometimes 30 minutes. Um, and then, of course, YouTube is mostly long-form video. Um, they experimented with shorts on YouTube, but I don't know that it really worked really well. Um, so videos can be, you know, a couple of three, four, five minutes. They don't have to be really long. Um, Instagram Reels uh, can be 15 seconds. Uh, 60 seconds and three minutes, I believe. And I think that's the same for TikTok as well. And so when you're thinking about video, you can think about, that's another thing if you're a newbie, you can think about it being, you know, relatively short. Like people have really short attention spans. So you just want to make a really short video. Make sure you include captions. 
um, in case people don't have their sound on. Most people look at videos without their sound on. Um, and what was another thing I wanted to share about video? Uh, captions, short form, maybe it'll come to me, I forgot that quick. Um, and so, oh, I know. So the other thing that you want to think about when you're, when you're making videos, particularly on Facebook or Instagram, um, you want to think about being able to use that video perhaps in an ad. And so if your video is going to be used in an ad, then you're only going to use, you know, maybe 60 seconds, um, um, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes worth of video, three minutes at the most of video for your ad um, to run on Facebook or Instagram. Okay, so that's how you can kind of think about um, how long your video should be if you're a newbie. Start out with what makes you comfortable. If it's pre-recorded, great. Um, if it's short form, great. Um, and then just work your way up to um, maybe longer videos, work your way up to going live, etc. cetera. Um, but you certainly want to find a way to get started. Um, and then of course with um, pre-recorded, you can, you know, um, edit or you can re-record as many times as um, what makes you comfortable. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, people love, you know, people that are, um, you know, just real on video. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Um, and then I have two more. Um, I have three more. So the next one is, this is a common mistake too is to make sure that if you're, to make sure that your business social media profile is set for business or is set for creator mode. It depends on the platform, whether it needs to be um, uh, creator mode or whether it needs to be like a business account. Um, and the reason why that's important is because when you use creator mode, or you use um, make your account a business account, you have a lot more tools that, that you can use um, to grow your social media following, um, to be able to sell on social media as well. Um, so like on LinkedIn, it's creator mode. You want to have creator mode. You get lots of great um, benefits for having um, the creator mode instead of your personal profile or having your personal profile not tagged as creator mode. Um, on, um, of course, on Facebook, you want to have a Facebook business page. Um, you can do a little bit of posting and things like that about your business on your personal page, but they really, you know, um, Facebook really frowns upon doing a lot of business on your personal page. Um, so you definitely want to have a Facebook business page. And of course, you can share some of your things to your personal page. Um, and of course, your Facebook business page also allows you to be able to create ads. So just make sure whatever platform that you're using, that you're using um, the business version um, for your particular profile. Um, and so you can usually look in settings um, on whatever platform it is and to see what your options are. La um, next to last is to make sure if you're selling products, um, it's coming along for services as well, but make sure that you're using the e-commerce tools that are available on social to be able to sell your products. Uh, and so um, usually there are certain rules you have to follow. So um, if you have products for sale uh, in particular, you want to make sure that people can shop directly from your social media platform, wherever that's available. So, of course, you can shop on Facebook. You can shop on Instagram. Um, you can shop, of course, on um, uh, TikTok as well. Uh, and so make sure that you're using e-commerce tools 
if that is an option based on the platform, based on the number of followers you have, based on whatever rules are set. Um, but if you fit the criteria, make sure that it's um, uh, set. About 60% of purchasing decisions are made on the fly. Uh, and so, um, you know, you want to make sure that it's you're in the mix if you can be. Um, so use the e-commerce tools on social media if possible, if you fit all of the uh, criteria. Um, so um, when doing videos are these how-tos. So you can do videos on how-to, you can do videos on a day in the life of, you could do a video you know, behind the scenes. You could do a video as a story, like in your stories. Um, and so that can be really, really quick. Um, you could also do, so when I say video, that could be a video like pre-recorded. It could be a story. It could be a reel. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like an MP4, you know, that you shot with your desktop or your webcam or your um, camera. And so you can do behind the scenes, you can do uh, how to, uh, you could do, um, you know, if you're uh, a day in the life of, did I say that already? Uh, you could do uh, collaborations, you could do interviews. Um, so there are lots of different things that you can do depending upon your business. Um, you can do uh, cooking demonstrations. You can do pop-up shops. Uh, so just depending upon your business, uh, you can do all types of things. You can um, have a little bit of fun, show your personality, um, show your family if you're you know not too squeamish about that in terms of privacy. Um, so that people can get a sense of who you are. Um, people do business with people. And so, um, especially nowadays, you know, people like to looky-loo and know who they're doing business with. Uh, and so, um, there are lots of different options for that. The very last one is... Da -da 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 -da. Paid spend is important. Paid advertising is super important. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to spend thousands of dollars, but there are a couple of things that I want you to think about when it comes to paid advertisement. So when we talk about social media platforms, they, of course, make more money um, when they engineer... Um, the algorithm to favor ad span. I'm hoping I'm saying that so that you can understand what I'm saying. So the social platforms, they make more money when they engineer the algorithm to favor ad span. And so what that means is if we are just generating content, generating content, generating content, you know, me, you, Gabrielle, Kim, um, all of the people that we know. If we are generating content, it's, it's so much content that's being generated um, that our good stuff can't sort of get to the surface, right? Because, you know, there's so many people running businesses, um, and so we have a lot of competition regardless of what our business is. And so, you know, we have all this content that's being generated. It makes it really hard for, you know, good stuff to rise to the top um, in a really e efficient way. But when we think about ad spend or when we think about spending dollars on advertisement, um, your content strategy, so when I was talking about sales and marketing and linking those two together, ideally your content strategy will include either a weekly or monthly budget to promote your best content, number one, and promote that content to the part of your audience 
that is more likely to respond, to convert, or to purchase. And so that goes all the way back to your customer journey. So when you're doing things to get people, get cold people to click on your landing page, to click on your opt-in, to click on your freebie, and then you go and create an ad, you can say, hey ad, show this ad to everybody that opted in to my lead magnet. Or for your warm audience, these are people that are already on your email list. You can say, hey ad, show this ad to everybody that's on my email list. Or you can say, hey ad, show this to everybody that has purchased this thing from me. When you have your ads being shown to people that already know you in some shape, form, or fashion, they are more likely to respond, convert, and purchase. And so you don't want to do, you don't want to spend money on an ad and it's all willy-nilly. So hopefully you see that if you um, really do a lot of work to drive people to click on something that belongs to you, to click on something that belongs to you, you can go back and make an ad that is shown just to those people versus showing an ad to just, you know, two million people. Um, and then in that way, it doesn't make, it. not that it doesn't make sense, but it's more difficult to get a good return on your investment. And so as much as possible, uh, you do want to make um, paid advertisement a part of your strategy. But what you may have to do first is do some ramping up um, for your customer journey. Your customer journey is going to be in the strategies and the activities that you're doing for your cold, warm, and uh, hot audiences. It's going to be driven by your sales and marketing, uh, making sure that those are connected. And then when you add in your paid advertising, you can make sure that just people that are in your ecosystem, they're in your world some type of way, are the ones that are seeing your ads. And then in that way, that's one strategy to make sure, um, not make sure, but it's one strategy for you to be more likely to be successful in ad spend. But with so much that's going on and so many people, so much content, really to get in front of your audience, it's going to take some ad spend. Organic, it works. Organic is, is not what it used to be, though. It's not as easy as it used to be um, because so many social media platforms, you know, want us to spend money. And then when we're spending money, they're obligated to put that those that information in front of people more so than the content that we are creating um, for free. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, and so for 2022, what you want to focus on is making sure that your sales and marketing are aligned at all times. One must be linked to the other. So anything that you're marketing, your call to actions, your posts, um, your videos, if you're podcast guessing, anything, it must be connected to something, to a product or service that you have. Um, uh, you want to make sure that you have strategy for your cold, warm, and hot audiences. Um, you want to figure out a way to use video in a way that makes sense for you. Uh, you want to make sure that your social media profiles that you're using um, are either set for business or creator. Super important and easy to do. And you get so much out of doing that. You want to use e-commerce tools on social if it's available to you. And then you want to figure out your paid um, spend and um, your paid advertising. So uh, the Elite Sales Kit has all of the tools, templates, video tutorials that you need to be able to incorporate 
a lot of these 2022 marketing strategies. Um, and so you can check out the Elite Sales Kit at elitebusinesscoaching.org forward slash elite sales kit, all lowercase letters. Um, there's uh, tutorials, tools, and templates in there for you to build your list, to launch your business, to create your customer journey. Um, but more than anything, it's a very powerful 12 month um, calendar, sales calendar, sales and marketing calendar system that I created that is right there for you to be able to plan out uh, your sales and marketing for an entire year. And of course, it's something that you can use, you know, annually. Uh, and so um, you can check out EliteBusinessCoaching.org forward slash Elite Sales Kit. Um, you should see the link somewhere while I'm talking. Um, and then I'll also share that in the post. Uh, so if you need more support, if you need the tools and templates to be able to do the things that I'm sharing, uh, you can get some help in the Elite Sales Kit. So I'll be here tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Before I go, um, drop in any last minute questions you may have. Um, and then if you catch the replay, give me a hashtag replay. Drop your questions um, under the video or send me a direct message um, and I'll be sure to answer your question there as well. Um, and so uh, don't forget to check out the Elite Sales Kit at EliteBusinessCoaching.org um, forward slash Elite Sales Kit. And Gabrielle, when you come up for air, just um, let me know. And... Um, I got you so we can and figure out, look at what's going on and get you squared away. Okay, so until tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm Andrea White, CEO of Elite Business Coaching, where I am obsessed with helping solopreneurs to have strong lead generation, attract raving repeat customers, and make consistent leaps in sales without overwhelm, frustration, or confusion. All right, see y'all tomorrow.